Relax, the keyboard is off, the press box is closed, but the mic is just getting warmed up as the guardian of the blue paint turned writer extraordinaire is on his game this week. The show where the writer is fresh off the presses and the ink is not dry. In fact, it is still dripping. That's how fresh off the presses the articles are. Welcome to the Hockey Writers, Inc. Join Lance and Steele as we bring you all the latest. Hi guys, welcome back to another edition of the Hockey Writers Inc. I'm your host, Lance Green. And I'm your co-host, Steel Flyers. Oh my gosh, man. We got a great show for you guys. We got an awesome lineup for you with great articles from Lance and man. Wow. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to do our best, we promise. Can the Flyers learn from their mistakes is the title of the show. And all right, good. You just took a deep breath. Okay, I can tell you you, you got your mouthpieces not in because you're ready to talk some trap. I'm sorry. I get it. Okay, Lance, today you dropped a huge knowledge bomb on the on the world today with your latest piece uh, onto flyersnittygritty.com. And you also, the uh, other article that you talked about uh, or that you wrote um, just a couple of days prior, we're going to get into. Um, first of all, I would like to say congratulations to you uh, for doing some games. Since our last show, you were at a game and was able to cover a, a game there for the Flyers. Sure. Yeah, man, that was awesome. Loved uh, seeing some of that footage. That's great. Love to see that. <laughs> um, looking dapper as well, too, you know. Gotta, I try, I try. That's right. You gotta, you know, you gotta walk the walk and talk the talk, you know. So, <laughs> also, I'd like to thank uh, FlyersNittyGritty.com uh, and Jamie Baskow and the rest of the group there uh, for helping to um, the Hockey Writers Inc. to make Bleacher Reports for the nineteenth week in a row. That is the salute. Uh, big thank yous to that guy, to those guys, and all their support. And everything that they do to help us and and support you, Lance, and to help help you live out your dream and to help me live out mine too. You know what I mean. So big thanks. Indeed, indeed. Yes. So big props to them. Thank you very much. Uh, we would also like to thank our sponsor, uh, Canine Country Club Resorts dot com. Um, they have been uh, a great supporter of us since the pretty much since the beginning, uh, and. Look for some great uh, things for them. Uh, we, we're going to be showing a commercial from them as well, too. So it's a great place for your pets and get all your pet uh, daycare needs. They have a pool, indoor and an outdoor pool. Um, they do all kinds of great programs there called the WAGS program that you get your dog enrolled in. And you can also do, uh, you know, multiple stays and or just regular daycare days or an hour. So thank you very much to them for being our sponsor. Check them out, www.cccresorts.com. All right, buddy. Here we go. This this is it. This is where this is the whole meat. And this is the whole crux. The first article that you that we're going to talk about is the one that you dropped today. That huge knowledge bomb. Uh, the Flyers now find themselves in pursuit of some help in between the pipes. Uh, just released on Flyers Nitty Gritty today. It's still dripping uh, the ink on this, uh, and it's just another home run when it comes to to this great article. Cannot say enough um, how hard it is to write the truth and then talk about it yeah very much uh a lot of a lot of people that saw this title they they thought i came up with the idea of you know uh trading carter or looking for other people and all this and that is totally false guys um this is chuck fletcher's baby this is what he's been rumored to be looking for ever since Hart was uh basically made a healthy scratch uh, a couple of games ago. So this, this is a reality. This isn't just me sitting here dreaming up this stuff. Um, this, this is a harsh reality of where the team is headed right now. Um, I think the, the strongest point I made possibly in this article is that both Chuck Fletcher and AV don't have any holds on to heart. Okay. And by yeah. what I mean by that is mm -hmm. they didn't draft him. They didn't have any part in bringing him to Philadelphia. So, uh, you know, maybe Ron Hextall would have maybe baby this, you know, guy along a little bit more and, and, and spoon fed him uh, along. But these guys 
need to win now. And, um, you know, both of their jobs are looking to be rather grim right now if they don't get things squared away rather quickly. Um, and this is just one way that Chuck Fletcher, I guess, sees that uh, he possibly could better this team now. Uh, when I wrote this article, do I agree with this decision? No. As I stated in the article, uh, I think that the root of the problem is not the goaltending, although uh, oh, we're gonna both, get into of, that. both their numbers are not the greatest. But, you know, this is not the root of the problem. That's exactly, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. And this is one of the reasons why I, I call this article a home run. This is what I mean by it's 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 hard to write the truth and then talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because. This is this is why this platform exists, man. For you to be able to do exactly that, for you be for you to be able to um, give us the reasons and the rhymes and the wherefores and the where tos of what's going on here with these articles. And and this is why I love doing this, man, because I love picking your brain, and and I love the articles that you write, man, because you, I you write the truth, okay. And this is another. I this is why I started listening, watching Jamie. Because I, I love reading Jamie's stuff because it's all about the truth. It's the core. It's from here. Okay, that's what I like. You know what I mean? Plus, it's correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what uh, that's what you know. Me and Jamie really sat down and talked about when he started this website, and uh, you know when he uh, urged me to come join him. And uh, Thank this you. is what this Thank is you, what Jamie. <laughs> this is what. Uh, yeah, this is what we, we wanted to do for and sure. uh, provide a place for real Flyer fans to get real information, not somebody that's been working for the team or whatever uh, for a paper for so long that they have to write uh, feel-good articles, let's say, about the team all the time when it's not really the case of the, of the way the fans are feeling right now. So Exactly. Exactly. This is another reason why I love giving you the platform to do this in a video format as well, too. Um, so God, thank you for all that. I'm going to go a little off the rails here. Uh, and and this suppose that suppose you're the owner of the team. And what would your first move be in regards to this issue? Well, I mean, exactly, uh... exactly with what you explained in the article. And this is why I'm asking you this. Because of what you explained in the article. So that's why I want to ask you this question now. You are the owner of this team. What's the first move you do? Well, it's it's very tough. Uh, right now you have a young phenom goaltender that you guys drafted and, and thought to be the future in the franchise moving forward. And he's obviously frustrated. Uh, in the quote from the article that uh, he stated that I put in there, he said, Carter Hart said, I just need to find more ways to stop pucks. Just go out and play, not overthink things and just trust my game. It's just pretty crappy right now to put it nicely. Yeah, right. Uh, Beep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So obviously he's frustrated. Yeah. And if he's the bread and butter to this team moving forward, I think that you need to find a way, if you're the GM, to get him on the right track again. Uh, obviously, his play has been horrendous uh, as of late, and his confidence is all but gone. So uh, what I would do it would be to bring in a first-pairing right-hand shot defenseman in that sense. Uh, <laughs> but that is not the case that uh, Chuck Fletcher is leaning towards right now. I think he's also looking uh, for some kind of deal like that, but... Uh, he's out there looking for a goalie right now. And uh, there, I, I, I took that uh, sense and ran with it in this yeah, article yeah, yeah. and proposed three different goalies that I think he would look at. Not necessarily that I or any other fan might want him to look at right now, but real logical choices coming from his brain yeah. that he might be uh, thinking to bring in here. Okay. So. So if you're the owner, you still allow him to run the team then? Uh, I would say for right now. I think uh, okay. up to this point, up to this point, Chuck Fletcher has drafted pretty well. Um, he has made some ill-advised choices um, okay. as far as as far as signing players. Uh, 
to bring into the team as a coaching choice. It looked great the first season, but I'm thinking AV has lost the team at this point as well. Um, do I want to go through another season of firing another coach and then bringing up Scott Gordon? Um, no, I don't at this point in the season. I want to see if they're going to write themselves this season or be able to. I want to see and force Chuck Fletcher's hand at making a big move. I want to see when uh, his back is now against the wall. Give him I want rope. to see. I want to see him. Yeah, I want to give him the rope. <laughs> I want to see if he's going to if he's going to swing with that rope across to the the ledge beyond and and carry this. Be able to make that move to to bring in a guy that can carry the team past this uh, hardship, or if he's going to do nothing or make the wrong move and since hang himself with it. And then uh, I think this season is, is a crap shoot at this point anyway. So um, I want to see if he's going to make a big move and and in the right direction, or if he's going to hang himself and thus let's just bring up the young kids yeah. In a few games, which I think, you know, they've already started to uh, with bringing different names up with Tanner Lezinski and, and Lina Sandine up to the taxi squad as of late. Um, so, you know, I, that's where I want to go. Do I think that firing both the coach and the and the GM right now is the answer? No, I don't think that you're going to find be able to find somebody to bring in right now that uh, is going to make the team that much better this season. So I want to see them make that big change, big move in the lineup and uh, in in the trade deadline and see where if they can write it. Okay. Uh, I agree with you a lot. We we have been preaching to the choir a lot about the defense needs to be upgraded, not the goaltending. Right. And and this is what I want to get into. This is why I wanted to get into this specifically because I agree with you 110%. If you get a right-hand defensive shot that can bang the boards, that can make that first initial pass, and 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 it's got some size and some weight and some skating ability and doesn't know how to turn the puck over, I, I guarantee you'll see a different goaltender. Look, the fact that Carter Hart has been out and the team is still losing 6-1 to one, right there proves to me that it is not the goaltending. So, with that being said, is this just a simple case of Carter Hart getting some practice time and getting some time away to regroup? Uh, okay, so where, where I hit in, that, in this article with that thought process in mind is that um, Carter Hart, in a sense, doesn't know how to lose. And he, since, you know, he was 15 years old, all he ever did is win. Okay. Um, Championship after championship at each individual level of play in juniors and everything that he's been in. Now, this being his first real test of some adversity to uh, see his way by, uh, he's, he's, you know, floundering in a sense. Um, But it's nice to see that it's not only him. Now, Brian Elliott, on the other hand, is now, now, you know, has been carrying the team a little bit in a sense when Carter Hart was floundering. But uh, now the team is playing no different in front of Elliott. And Elliott has a lot more years under his belt in the NHL that he has been that guy where he has had horrible defenses in front of him and he's had to play above and beyond just to keep which he has here as well uh, up till recently um, to that point where he's, he's keeping the team at least competitive on a night in a night out basis. Uh, So do I think, you know, bringing in a, another goaltender is the answer? No, I don't. I think they're going to get much of the same result, even from the names I, I mentioned yeah, uh, in the article yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that have been much of that same role as Elliot was trying to provide exactly. on other teams. Exactly. So that's why I want to get into next. In the article, you do mention some players that you think Chuck would be interested in, and and when I looked at when I read this article, I was like, I mean, I could kind of see maybe one of them. Yeah, but look. 
tell me who the names of these players were that you think that Chuck would be looking at. Right. So again here, guys, it's what I think Chuck is going to That's be looking I'm, at. I'm stressing right. Chuck is right. looking at because not if, us. <laughs> right. If it was me, then if if I mm. wanted to go this route and I was a GM, I would be looking at Jonathan Quick, who has a couple of different cups. I would look be looking at a, a 38-year-old P.K. Ryan uh, from Nashville, somebody that has experience uh, in a number one goaltender to bring in for this season. But that's me. That's not Chuck. Some of the guys that uh, I think Chuck is is currently looking at uh, to bring in, if he so chooses to do so, would be number one, uh, Jonathan Bernier, which uh, is playing for the Detroit Red Wings right now. Uh, he is kind of beat, uh, beat up and banged up right now. He's recovering, but he should be back soon. Uh, but he is much a player like Brian Elliott, who over the course of this, uh, his career has played for many different teams. I think five uh, to be exact up to this point. And he's never really been a overall number one guy for any length of time. He has been at times. But then he again settles in as a backup role or is brought in in a sense that uh, a number one guy has gone down and he's to fill in for a yep. short time period, yeah, yeah. which mm -hmm. is much needed right oh, now. Yeah. Especially um, this time. The, right. The team has been linked to him by multiple different reports out there and trade chatter. Um, and obviously the Detroit Red Wings are absolutely horrendous right now. And he's been one of the only bright spots on that team this season. Uh, so he would be uh, one guy. Uh, I think he has a expiring contract at the end of this year that would uh, only, uh, I think he makes $3 million. Um, he's in his early 30s. And he would be somebody that could possibly come in and, and be a maybe a step up from a Brian Elliott in that sense. Because um, he's two years younger. Because he's a couple of years younger and uh, he's coming in and not having this, uh, you know, he's coming in with a new sense of it's a new team. It's a new breath of fresh air yeah, for given, him. Yeah. Get, get from for him, obviously, being with the Detroit Red Wings, who are even worse than us right now. So that's that's <laughs> one person. OK. OK. Who else? Uh, another person would be uh, a guy who Chuck Fletcher uh, yeah would be recycling in a sense and bringing back from a team previous that he has uh, done in the past. Now, uh, a reason why I think his mindset would be here, guys, is he has shown in the past with guys like Chris Stewart, Nate Prosser, and Curtis Gabriel uh, all have played with him before, uh, for him before uh, with the Minnesota Wild and, and elsewhere. And uh, he's at one point or another brought them into the flyer system because he thought that they could help his team along. So he is uh, one of those guys that, that will bring it back a guy. And that's why I think he has to be looking towards uh, a Devin Dubernick uh, of the San Jose Sharks right now, who uh, played for uh, uh, the wild for a number of years. Yeah. 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 During his during Chuck's tender there, yeah. and uh, you know why while he has been struggling as of late for the Sharks, he could be looking at a you know much better um, situation here in Philly Grass as well. Grass is greener. Grass is greener. He he does get paid a little bit more than um, Bernier, but he does still have better. an expiring contract. And he has over 150 more starts in the NHL than Bernier does. So he has a little bit more time in between the pipes and, and has been that number one guy for teams in the past. Um, so that is one sense. And, and obviously, you would want the struggling Sharks right now to be able to uh, retain some of his salary through the rest of this season so that it wouldn't limit us if we just went out and got if the Flyers just went out and got him and that would be the only cap space they had to do anything, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, he is a big guy, he's six, six. Uh, so he would cover a lot of net up and, uh, you know, that's one other person that he might have his eye on. Uh, the last guy would be a Darcy, uh, Kemper in a sense with the Arizona coyotes currently. 
he too uh, was, uh, I think, signed and drafted by Chuck um, during his time in the wild. And uh, he is a big guy too, at six foot five and over 200 pounds. Um, He's since moved on to Arizona, where he's pretty much had a successful uh, run with them last season and this season as well before getting injured. Uh, So he too, like Bernier, is coming back from injury very soon and could help uh, the struggling Flyers out, uh, being that the Coyotes, uh, you know, probably aren't going to make the playoffs this season as well at this point and uh, might be looking to get rid of him. He does have a year on his contract after this, which, uh, again, we would want the Coyotes to then possibly pick up uh, or retain part of his salary for this year and next Mm. if we made a deal. Mm. So in all these cases, I think we're going to have to overpay the price that we would uh, just to be able to acquire these guys. And do I want to see the asking price for Bernier uh, is the only clear-cut uh, one that's been out there, and that's even a second-round draft pick. And that's a lot to ask of a struggling Flyers team who, ha- at this point, if they keep going in the route they, they are in, it's going to be a pretty high, close to first-round draft pick being that second-round pick. Is is he really the guy that's going to push them over the edge and write this all? I don't think either one of these three options would be that at this time. I have to agree with you 100%. I, the goaltending you have is in the system currently. Um, we, if, if you had to go worst-case scenario, you can get Ivan for next year. Yeah, and I definitely think that any of these three guys are not going to be a long-term option. They're going to be this season, the rest of the season and be either let go or in Kemper's uh, case, he might be around and maybe you don't bring back uh, Brian Elliott next season being that uh, Darcy is uh, quite a few years younger than Elliott and he would then take his spot in helping hard along and uh, until you get a guy like Ivan uh, to come across from the KHL. Exactly. So I, th- that's why I wanted to say that because I, I don't think – personally, I don't think it's the goaltending that needs to be rectified here. And and, and frankly, if I was the owner of this and, and I was seeing what the general manager was doing and look at him looking at goaltending, I, I, I might have to have a meeting and call him into my office and be like, um, excuse me, Mr. Fletcher, but um, smack – um, goaltending is not where you should be looking. Um, I think that the time away and some practice time for Carter Hart is going to do him some good. I don't, and maybe a stint down in the AHL. Why not? What? The, what? Why? I mean, that you can call it conditioning. You can call it training. I don't care what you call it. Send him down there and let him play. Because he needs to build confidence. And the best way to do that is to have him play with some teammates that he's played with before. Have him get used to playing his new style, his new technique that he's trying to, you know, do whatever, you know, whatever he's doing. You know, give him an opportunity. At least he would be playing. At least he would be giving given an opportunity to do those kinds of things. You know what I'm saying? Yes, very much so. Um, I think that, like I said in my article, that uh, Carter Hart is um, frustrated. He is working on his game. He does want to succeed, unlike what AV has him kind of labeled at in one of the quotes that he said in, in uh, used in the article, I uh, basically was saying he needs to try harder and he needs to practice harder. I don't think that's the case at all. Yeah. I don't know why AV would say that, but um, at, at, at this point, uh, uh, Carter Hart has fired his, uh, sports psychologist that he's been using since his time at Everett and juniors. Um, because he doesn't feel that's working anymore. He wants to move in a new direction. Clearly. He's, he's trying to right his wrongs here, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, and I said also in there, as you alluded to, uh, I think possibly, um, I don't know the stipulations with him. He's still on a rookie deal, Carter Hart is. Um, and he, you know, being that he would get a new year deal next year, uh, I 
don't know how that would work to send him down. I don't think he would have to go through waivers at this point. He should still be on a two-way deal. But um, don't quote me on that. That's a good point. Uh, but uh, I would have to look into that further. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. The team has not really made any points to do that just yet. But if if I, if I had so choice and I was the GM, I think I would do that at this point because he has a guy down there in Wyatt Wiley, who he played in juniors in Everett with, who he won championships with. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, he, being a goalie, uh, I know uh, specifically, like, one guy I can say that I played with my whole career uh, grow, uh, as a kid growing up, and that he just brought a sense of calmness to my game when he was out on the ice. Uh, he's somebody that I grew up playing with. I knew... Um, where he was on the ice. I knew what he was going to do on the ice. He knew what I wanted from him uh, in different situations during the game. And it would always, uh, playing with him when I when I was on different teams or came back to being on another team with him, yeah. it always brought us right back to where we were uh, at the level of play that we knew we could both play right. at because... Um, we, we knew each other in that sense. And I think that, you know, uh, not saying that Wyatt Wiley and him are that that close, but I think that somebody, that familiarity yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from you. his past could could right his wrongs in a sense and get his confidence back a little bit. See, that's, so, right. that's see, exactly. We, we would have to kind of be checking into that to see if that's going to be the case, if, uh, if uh, Carter Hart even could go down to play in the AHL. I don't, I don't know what... We'd have to check on that, but that's a possibility. I'm not, I I'm not against that idea. To be honest with you, either I don't have a problem with that. Um, I think that would be an excellent idea to be to be truthful with you. I mean, at this point, what do you have to lose? And all you can do is make things better for your goaltender and, and increase his confidence and everything like that. You know, Lance, this is a perfect article to point out just how disconnected this team feels from the inside as well as the outside that they are talking about looking for goaltending help when clearly this is not the issue for the most part um i i, I think i think defense if you just had a defensive player that could do those things and and be that player they they are out there they just cost a lot Okay, and and so instead of bringing in these tweeners and these guys that you think might be able to help the team, go get somebody you know can help the team. I, I'm tired of seeing all this. I think this guy can help the team. No. Bring in somebody that is going to help the team, and it's going to need to be more than one guy. So. Yeah, I, de I definitely think you're on that right path there. Um, the the Flyers need to do that. They need to overpay. They need to go out and get a home run here to right the wrongs and 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 fix this problem. Um, if you get creative, I think Chuck Fletcher, like he did when he was able to steal uh, Niskin in a way from the Capitals uh, because they were in a cap hardship. Um, you know, I think a, a player like that is out there and you won't have to pay the David Savard or, or any of these other guys that are sitting at the top of every team's trade bait list right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and talking about first round picks and everything else. I, I think that you could steal a guy for a lot less yeah. and, um, you know, him feel that same void that has been left by uh, Matt Niskin in uh, early retirement. So, exactly. you know, I, th I think it is out there. I think they do need to do something, and I think they do need to do something now. Yeah, I'm with you on that for sure. Well, listen, uh, we're going to take a little break here. We're going to have a quick word from our sponsor, uh, www.cccresorts.com. Uh, they are a great sponsor of the show. Um, they've been since the very beginning, and uh, check them out. Uh, they got a great facility, and... You'll love seeing these, uh, seeing what they offer. So uh, thank you very much for our sponsor. Greetings. This is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, and we have two very special guests. We are delighted to be joined by Tracy Musser and Nicole Howard from the Canine Country Club Resorts. Tracy and Nicole are both managers for CCC Resorts and work at the Windsor or at the club, one of two locations both in Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Congratulations on your 30th year anniversary of being in business. 
Let me start off by saying this. Steel Flyer stands behind this company 100%. They can taken care of Steel Flyer's furry friend for the last two years now, and they are a one-stop shop for everything your furry friend needs. In fact, let's find out what our friends at CCC Resorts offer. Nicole, how are you today? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. What are some of the great boarding services that you guys offer, and what do we have to do in order to get our furry friends taken care of when we are unable to travel with them? Well, we like to bring everybody in for a tour first. That way they can see the behind the scenes. They can see where they stay. They can see where they play. And then we explain all of the fun things that we can add on to their reservation, whether it be one of our packages, either a nature walk, a ball time, or even a cuddle time. Oh, wow. That sounds great. Um, boy, it sure sounds like a resort to me. So how are you today, Tracy? I'm doing well. Thank you. Tracy, tell me, is it true that you guys have both an indoor and an outdoor pool at the Windsor location? It is true. We've got one of each, so we're able to offer year-round swimming. The indoor pool is a great option for dogs who are swimming for therapy or rehab. It's got that sloped entry so they can wade into the water. Our outdoor pool is a little bit larger, and it's uh, four, four foot deep the whole way across. Uh, and both of them are saltwater pools, so it's really easy on the dog's skin and coat. Wow, that's very awesome. So then during the summer months, you have a much deeper pool outside and then a sloped entry shallow pool indoors for the dogs. Tracy, tell the folks how we can get some pool time. Well, the first thing everyone does is come for an intro swim. Uh, we use that time to make sure the dog is comfortable in the water. We make sure they know how to get out of the pool safely. And we go over all the pool rules and etiquette with the clients as well. After that, they're able to schedule private appointments where they have the pool to themselves, or they can invite friends and have a whole group swim going on. So after a dip in the pool, then it would have to be off to the groomers, right? I mean, our furry friends cannot go out looking their best. Nicole, what are some of the great services your top-notch groomers provide? Our groomers, uh, they specialize in full-service grooms. We can do the basics, whether it be just a bath and a brush out or a blowout. Uh, or for the extra pampered pooches, we can do nail dremels. We can do uh, deodorizing soaks and also facials. <laughs> wow. Man, that sounds like a resort if you ask me. <laughs> Tracy, I know one of the main programs uh, here at CCC Resorts is the WAGS program. The Steel Flyers dog is enrolled in this program. So why don't you tell the folks what is involved in this and how they can get enrolled? Yeah, the WAGS program is our primary daycare option at the Windsor. Uh, it's designed to be a structured program for people who are looking for a set routine for their dog. They all come on the same days each week, which allows uh, them to have set friends and we know exactly what's going on with each group. So we do a little bit more activities and we build more into their, their daily routine there. But we've got other daycare options as well for people looking for a little less commitment. We do an hourly care where you can drop them off and just pay by the hour. We also do a day stay option, which is great for the dogs that prefer human friends instead of making friends with other dogs. And then we have a traditional daycare option as well if you're looking for the occasional outing for your dog. Wow, there you have it. A full service groomer, a daycare program, and an indoor and outdoor pool. What more could you ask for? Sure seems like CCC Resorts has everything covered. Remember, DOG, depend on God. All right. Well, thank you very much for our sponsor, uh, www.cccresorts.com. Check them out for all your daycare and pool needs for your dog uh, and your cat. Uh, they do all kinds of great services there, so check them out. Thank you very much for being our sponsor. All right, Lance, the other article that we have to talk about here is the one that you posted just the other day. And, man, what another great piece uh, to the flyersnittygritty.com website. Um, clearly, the Flyers have not learned from other mistakes. Carter Hart is beginning to draw some alar alarming similarities to young Steve Mason. And, 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 and I have to say, I can see what you're talking about indeed. And when this article was initially posted, there was some flack, feedback, uh, brushback, whatever you want to call that. I mean, you were you know, dodging bullets there a little bit. So, all right, let's hear it. I, I agree with you to the, I, I mean, I can see the similarities. I really can see the similarities. So it, it just seems like a similar path with both, Ma Mason, yeah, with both Mason and Hart winning at such a young age. And you pointed it out earlier in the beginning part of the show. So, all right, man, what's what's going on here with this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so to explain the the 
the background behind this article is, you know, I, I'm a goalie. Uh, I've been a goalie for 30 years. I've studied goalies. And, you know, I studied a, a you young... Because are one. <laughs> right. I, so I studied, I studied a young Steve Mason when he was drafted because he came yeah. with a lot of hype, just like Carter Hart did coming from yeah. Everett. Uh, yeah. Won the Calder. So, yeah. Like, so, yeah, Steve Mason won the Calder yeah. and everything like that coming out. He had an excellent season and uh, his first year. But, uh, you know, that that is where where it lies there. I think a lot of people, when you were talking about the flack, read the article and immediately said, oh, you know, Carter Hart's, you know, thinking I was picking on Carter Hart. I'm not picking on Carter Hart with this article, guys. I simply was stating that uh, his team and management is doing him a big disservice. And I think it became more apparent as it wasn't just Carter Hart. Now, now we've seen, now we're starting to see Brian Elliott get shell shocked too, yep. uh, on a nightly basis. So maybe it's not all Carter Hart here, guys. Hmm. Um, you know, it, it's a bigger issue, like we're saying, with the defense, yes. with the coach, with management rushing these two young guys along in their careers because of the need for them. Yeah. See, that's where that that's where the biggest part of this comes into is rushing them in for because of the need yes. um, and the whole thing was Carter Hart was kind of rushed because of the need because the year previously was the carousel of goalies where mm-hmm. the Flyers started a record eight goalies in one season I mean I, I that just is ridiculous the fact that they did that and then the, the next year this kid that, that Hextall drafted, you know, comes in and goes, yeah, I can play. And, and actually was lights out com, coming in and, and looked really good. So, like, all right, well, so ride the kid. Hey, he's playing good. He's We're winning games. Hey, hey we're winning. And, and yeah. it's amazing what the attitude of everybody is when the team is winning. For sure. And uh, much, much in that sense, I think what I say, Carter Hart started at, at what? Uh, came up when he was 20, 21, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. around about. And, uh, you know, Steve Mason had much of the same pedigree growing, coming up 10 years apart. But uh, in a sense, you know, uh, we might have had still Mason if he, he was successful in that. He's younger than Mason still, and he's already retired. Um, and why is that, guys? Let's let's dive into that a little bit here. Uh, Mason, Mason was a uh, award-winning pedigree. He's won yeah. every Ontario Hockey League Goaltender of the Year. He won OHL championships. Uh, World Junior Championships, just like Carter Hart, yep. uh, for Team Canada, winning gold for Team Canada, just like Carter Hart. Uh, but Mason was brought into Columbus early and rushed uh, be- at just 20 years old because of the uh, fact that they didn't have a franchise goaltender and they were struggling in that sense because the guy that was already there who was drafted in the first round, uh, a guy named Pascal uh, LeClaire, uh, number eighth overall he was selected by Columbus, wasn't Ooh. working out. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Pascal LeClaire, another young, uh, very, very you know, prominent goaltender uh, coming up, uh, even more so than, than Mason and... And Hart were at the time because he was drafted in the first round, eighth yeah, overall. Eighth overall and, for a and, goalie. and yeah, for a goalie is unheard of, guys. Very few guys reach that level. You know, Carter Hart was the best goalie of his draft class, and he was drafted in the second round. So wow. LeClaire uh, was thrown into, you know, the the big show at age twenty one and was since ruined by the time he was I don't know, 24, 25 by Columbus because of the, much of the same thing. He was rushed along and made to be that guy beforehand. But both, but going back to Mason here, uh, Mason, just like Carter Hart, had an amazing first season because he, he, was, he, was, he was so good that 
the team was able to ride him on that high coming out of juniors, coming out of a world uh, junior championship, yeah. uh, you know, gold medal and all this stuff. He was riding a high himself. Yeah. And, you know, he, he won 33 regular uh, season games. I see he had ton, 10 shutouts in his rookie season, won the Calder trophy for best rookie. And uh, much, which is unheard much, of for a goalie, which is unheard of for a goalie to win that award. Exactly. But just like, just like Carter Hart, his rookie season, was in Calder Trophy uh, contention, but he played a lot, a uh, lot fewer, a lot more games than Mason did. I think Mason only played in two or three games in the AHL before him being called up immediately to the NHL level. And I think uh, Carter Hart had what, like I don't know, a handful under twenty. Yeah, uh, before like he was called or something. Before he was called up to the NHL. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when when. When a lot of people busted on Hextall when they he didn't want to rush him, in a sense, and he wanted to him to get a full season or two in the AHL level before they brought him up to the NHL level, uh, and and said, "Oh, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about." But look at where it's got us now. We we have a fragile, uh, you know, goaltender that was supposed to be the franchise. Uh, goalie the the guy to replace Hextall uh you know since he last took off the pads and now we don't know how how much damage we've done to this guy throwing him into the limelight and and uh not setting him up just like Mason was with Columbus yeah. uh yeah, yeah. after after such a great season in a sense where he led the Blue Jackets to their first ever ever playoff run the team then couldn't afford to sign everybody back and people left and people retired and all that, just like Niskanen did, yeah, just like, just yours. like, just like Pitlick did after the great season the Flyers had last season. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now the Flyers didn't have that just like Mason's, uh, team didn't have that. Yeah. Um, even even after that, when Mason came to Philly and and restarted his career and had a phenomenal time in Philly when he had those pieces yeah. like a Kimo yeah. and, and a Mark Streit here yeah. to solidify that defensive core in Philly during his time here, the the Flyers let that get away. They Mason had a great year, so they said, ah, oh, we don't need those guys like a Timo. You know, and and traded him away. Obviously, he was getting up there in years, and they wanted him to actually go get a cup. And then Mark Streit, much of the same thing. You know, he was solid, but he was getting older and got. But they did nothing to replace those guys. They they changed that that sense of a uh, 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 protective defensive defenseman, and went all. Shane Gostas Bears and, and Sandheims and Myers, who who are all offensively minded defensemen and went out there and got Gustafson, another offensively uh, minded defenseman, and didn't take care of the porch, didn't take care of the guy who's supposed minded to be that net. backstop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Supposed, supposed to be that team's backstop in Carter Hart. And now he's all but a, a, a shattered form of his self now. Um, I... I tweeted out today about the fact that teams need physicality to win games, okay? And you need to have, not only do you need to have that goaltender back there, but you need to have that defense and, and players in front of you that are able to clear the porch, that are able to keep those point-blank shots from coming, that are able to keep those guys from swinging around the, the whole entire net to try to get those little wraparound tries or those little lacrosse things or whatever you want to call it, okay? You, you need those type of players. It's been completely proven and shown. All you have to do is look at Tampa Bay, St. Louis, Chicago, all the previous cup-winning teams, Boston, they all were physical teams that would hit you. Okay, and so even that, Pittsburgh had even had players Pittsburgh, on the back end. Gosh, come on! It's everybody knows that defense wins championships. It's across the freaking board. 
the hockey, football, doesn't matter. It's the same thing. You've got to be able to have those defensive players doing those things. Right now, the Flyers are significantly lacking in those particular areas by having the Shane Gostaspares and the Gustafsons and the Brawns of the world. Um, and then the young talent that's coming up, the Myerses and the Sandheims, and, and it's all kind of the same molded type player. And it's like, well, you got Proveroff out there, and you're just kind of letting that guy out there all by himself. He's playing 25 minutes a game. I mean, gosh, the guy's what, 24? Sounds awful familiar, guys. Uh, let's see, Timonen, Mark Streit, uh, Eric Desjardins. We, we had one amazing defenseman. We play the heck out of them and expect them to do everything, and then they get tired and they get broke down. Yeah. I mean, because what, they got to play so much. And what? God forbid anything to happen to to Provorov. <laughs> I, but okay. Do you think that there's anything that can be done here to right the ship for a Carter Hart? I mean, what, what? Look, we all you you've played. You know what it's like. You you've been that. You've been down there. You've 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 worn those skates. Okay. Yeah, I think I think that we we've, we've touched on it already, and and you said the physicality. Thank God, Chuck Fletcher came out and made a statement and, and told Sam Moran that he will play defense the rest of the year, whereas Av and Glory. Ian Laperriere yeah. want to play him on wing. That obviously didn't work. He's ecstatic. Uh, Moran is ecstatic that he has that opportunity to play defense. And, and that's where he feels he can help the team the most. And even though the team is losing, you can see that, that, that slow change when he's out on the ice for those couple minutes being obviously he's a, you know, not a top pairing defenseman, but uh, a banger, a, a grinder on the, on the bottom pair. And that's what he is. And that every team needs that, but we need more of that. Uh, and, and more of that to play minutes if we're going to have yeah. a yin and a yang effect with Sanheim and Myers and everybody in Gossespair and that want to go score goals. You have to have somebody that's going to do the opposite and stay back and protect the net and protect your asset in the blue paint that uh, we've been so long waiting for. You know, we need to protect that. We need to protect Carter Hart, and we're doing a horrible job of it. That's a specifically... Excellent point, uh, very good. Yeah, that that's why I wanted to point this out. That's why this was such a great article because it's not just it's not the goaltending. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Fletcher, but you are barking up the wrong tree here. You should not be looking for goaltending. If you want to look for goaltending, then I think you should look no further than the guy that you have potentially coming um, out of a contract that it's going to potentially be available, um, Ivan. Uh, and I would make sure that would be my number one priority, bring him in here and, and have him and Carter Hart. Uh, at, at this point, why not? I mean, I, I just yeah. don't understand what, what's going on here with why they're thinking about a goaltender when clearly they need a defensive player and another offensive player that is able to do some other things. You know what I'm saying? And yep. it just frustrates me that this is the direction that they're going. Yeah, I see this, and I and I and I like the um, uh, similarities that, or or a simile that I threw out there in a sense of football. Um, this is a, a a young goaltender, and you should treat him as if he was a young starting quarterback. Would you throw? Would you throw your young starting quarterback out there with a horrible offensive line, much like the Eagles last season uh, did to Carson Wentz, and say, hey, you know, this guy's not working. Let's go get another guy that you've been waiting for forever and, and is so hard to find. Or are you going to go get those cog pieces on that offensive line to shore it up to give that star player a little time uh, to be able to see the puck? to be able to uh, give him that time needed to do his job, much much as you should do in hockey. Exactly. You have a goalie. If, if you have five guys standing in front of him, how is he supposed to see the puck to stop it? 
I don't know. How is, you know, how do you not clear the porch out? How do you not give him the time and day and have people in front of him that know that when it's a two on one, I'm going to go ahead and take the pass away and allow him just to focus on the shot. This is basic stuff that the team isn't doing right now. Right. And, and it's just, it's just horrendous to, to blame it on a, a quarterback or much so the goalie yeah. in that sense. Yeah. When you have that, that awesome star player, that, that guy that has so much potential, but you don't protect him and you allow him to falter and, and fade away. You know, you clearly pointed this out in the article that it's it's not about that. It's about the fact that, you know, he's not being protected and he's not being taken care of, okay? And, and you can't have any – you can't expect success when you don't set somebody up for success. And that's that's the failing part here. That's this whole failing part is that if you're going to if you're gonna lean on this guy, then you got to put the pieces around him. And yes. if you don't put the pieces around him and, and he is not able to live up to quote-unquote expectations, then what? Uh, okay. <laughs> Mason had his own problems. And, and you know, there's a, I'm not saying that they're twins separated at birth here with the similarities of this article. But look at what happened with Mason. Look at ha what happened with... Um, uh, what's his name from the Capitals that came out and won a Vesna in his first year uh, at, at uh, Jim Carrey at yeah so much potential so much that and and then it just faded away because you didn't protect it you used and abused it for everything that it was worth and then threw him on the scrap heap uh, when he was when you were done with him because of the fact the Flyers need to get away from this and they've been running this carousel of goaltenders ever since really Ron Hextall retired. Okay. You know, we've had guys that have came in and done it. John Van Viesbrook oh, and yeah. all this other guys that, that, you know, showed promise on other teams and, and then they get here and the flyers didn't build around them. They didn't take care of them. They didn't set them up for, you know, success. They set them up to fail. And I Bob thought Rowski this, was a, yeah, Bob Bob, Rowski Bobrowski was a perfect example. Bobrowski, you know, perfect example there. I think they gave up on him a little too early because Ed Snyder was just tired of this sense, and he wanted a proven number one guy right now, and didn't want to wait for Bobrowski to develop. But you know, th this is this is the sense. Like you gotta protect and you gotta set up these guys to succeed, and we. As a as an organization have failed to do so, and I thought that this was going to be different with this new regime came in, yeah. but it it's becoming abundantly clear that they are just following suit, uh, and and not going that route that that maybe Hextall wanted to suddenly go and 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 uh, you know was trying to go, but you know, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I think we can both see the writing on the walls here. Um, let me see what I did there. Uh, this team is headed for some some serious shakeup, I think. And at this point, anyone is on the block, I suppose. I just I, I don't feel it should be the goaltending. There are uh, much more glaring issues other than the blue paint. And so I just that's my opinion. That's what yeah, I think I think it starts with the GM. I think he has to make a huge move to write this. I think the coach has to come in and utilize the players that he has better. I think that he needs to realize that his system isn't working and maybe change it. Uh, I think that uh, from a captain and an alternate captain uh, system. I think they need to step up more in the locker room and start yelling it at some guys and pulling some guys up uh, in a sense. But at the same token, when you look at a guy like Shane Gossespair, who did stand up and say, hey, you know, it's not just Carter Hart. Yeah. It, it's yeah. us. Yeah. We he need to do waved. better. Yeah. We, yeah. We, and and message. he gets waived for that. So I, I think the team and the organization as a whole is, is totally um, sending the wrong message here. And, 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 you know, I applaud maybe Sean Gossespair to step up and say, hey, you know, we're not doing it. 
you know, right. And we're, we're failing these kids and, and, you know, Elliot as well exactly. in, in that. And we need to be better yeah. and we need to take it upon ourselves to, to, to come out and prepare that much better. Exactly. And you know, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't get rewarded. It gets punished. So I, I seriously think that this team is, is digging themselves in a, in a trench that they're not going to be able to come out of unless they really make a strong effort to make some major changes soon. Well, <laughs> so speaking of changes soon, I mean, I know you put one out today. Uh, anything on the docket for coming up? Uh, some some stuff written down on scratch paper for sure. Uh, over the course of the weekend, I'm gonna I got uh, I got tomorrow off for the holiday, Ooh, yeah, so uh, well, maybe I can wake. Well, maybe I can wake up and uh, start to work on my next piece. But uh, yes, I do have some thoughts in mind, and awesome. uh, usually I let them build up until I I just have to get it out of my head. <laughs> and um, those are the and, best. Yeah, those are tend to be the best articles that I write. That uh, I just got to sit down and and not stop writing until yeah, it all man. gets out. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, there should be some new uh, good articles coming out sooner yeah. rather than later, and. Um, we shall see how this team is is going to push forward in the future. I I would like to say I, I do uh, like the fact that the team uh, did sign Cameron York, uh, and uh, I I look forward to seeing him hopefully in Lehigh Valley, uh, you know, soon. And uh, you know, just another uh, piece that that could, uh, you know, be be a protection for Carter Hart moving forward. So. Exactly. Yeah, that was one. That was one good sense that we, uh, you know, can can get off the the gray, dreary yeah. uh, sense of the That's Flyers right way. now. And, and That's look. a perfect way to end on a good, solid note because Cameron York, I, I got an opportunity to watch him play in juniors, uh, the World Junior Championships, and then I've been able to watch some of his college games. This guy is the real deal. He's not, you know, this big giant guy coming in like Sam Moran, but he is the real deal. Okay, and and I like what this guy is bringing to the table. So, yeah, I I hopefully think that this guy is going to be the real deal. Uh, you know, for Fletcher to pass up on a guy like Cole Caulfield when he was sitting there, he obviously had to think highly of him. And uh, his play this season did show that. Maybe he did make a uh, a pretty wise good move. One there, yeah. Pretty pretty wise move, and uh, you know we shall see what he has to offer the team moving forward. You got it, man. All right. Well, uh, Lance, uh, uh, we got another good one here for you. Um, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, we all appreciate um, you guys following us and liking us and watching us. We really appreciate all that. Uh, we really like uh, the fact that you guys. Um, do show your appreciation, so thank you very much for that. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Jamie Bascal, the FlyersNittyGritty.com group, uh, for all their support. So thank you very much for that. Lance, how can we get a hold of you? Where can we get all your great stuff? Sure. As always, you can catch my stuff on FlyersNittyGritty.com or follow me at tw or on Twitter at uh, LNG, B-A-S-S-I-S-T, -S -S the number is 39. And please, guys... Uh, I enjoy the feedback, um, but please don't just read the, the title of the article and assume you know what the article is. Give it a read. Give me a fair fair chance uh, and, and then comment on it. And I will love to sit there and debate with you on Facebook or Twitter or any, any uh, you know, link that I'm on and, uh, you know, hash out any, any questions you have on there. For sure, man, for sure. That's why we're here. That's why we do this. We want your feedback. We don't want you to just read the, the title. We want you to read the articles because that's that's why, you, Lance, you do these articles because it's it's information out there. And if you get the information, then we can sit down and have a good, intelligent conversation about this team. So thank you very much, Lance, for all the great work you do. Thanks for all the great articles that you write. Really appreciate that, man. Um, you're the, the wheel that makes this go. So... <laughs> Thank you very much for that, man. And uh, we will catch you all on the next episode of the Hockey Writers, Inc. This is Can the Flyers Learn from Their Mistakes. We'll catch you all on the next show. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, guys.